also released this weekend along with coming to America and the finale to WandaVision because y'all are some crazy people on y'all's release dates here. Uh, we got on Disney Plus Raya and the Last Dragon. Um, this is a fantastic movie. This was so... Here's the thing. I'll, I'll give you like a little bit of the behind the scenes, at least with us. I wasn't so eager to watch this. Um, like lately, as I've gotten older and become more of a curmudgeon, um, I have not been like really wanting to dive into the Disney animated movies. Mm -hmm. So I was like, okay, uh, maybe I'll watch this. And I know, uh, my brother here, uh, was, he was a lot more eager to watch this than I was. Uh, he was talking about, hey, let's watch this. We could review it on tagline. I was like, okay, I'll watch it. This yeah. is a good movie. This was such a good movie. It really is. Uh, I'll start off the bat by saying that if you're into what Disney's been doing on the animated side lately, whether it be your Frozens or your Moana, um, you're going to love this. This is right up the same alley as the rest of those the Disney animation studio are not missing a single beat and they're essentially taking a lot of lessons uh, that Pixar has been doing for a while and kind of integrating that stuff into their own way of storytelling and, and how they animate these movies. They are, they are producing movies that you could hang up in a museum and just stare at for hours. I mean, we're talking about animation <laughs> style right off the bat here. Uh, this is a beautiful, beautiful movie. Uh the animation is gorgeous. There's so many different like locations and stuff that are present within this movie that each have their own like character and environment to them that require just an extraordinary attention to detail in order to produce uh, just, just overall, like from an animation standpoint, it's a gorgeous film. Yeah. Uh, I like, I'll, I'll dive into some of the characters here. Um, uh, again, no no spoilers on this really. Um, uh, some uh, one of the things I want to touch upon was seen in the trailer, so it's not a huge spoiler. But I mean, you do know of like say in this image, you have Raya here with the last dragon, uh, Sisu. Uh, Sisu, of course, was portrayed by Aquafina, or at least in the voice voiceover of it uh <laughs> later on in the movie we do say we do see sisu take on a human form and i love love the way they made her here in that like you can see aquafina in her like they actually modeled her after aquafina but yeah. like the way that she looks you get the personality if you've seen aquafina in any movies like say i'll point out um oh uh oceans eight or um, crazy was it Crazy Rich Asians? Yeah, she was in that too. Yeah, yeah. Both of those movies, like she played a a really kind of over the top character. You can see that characterization of her, her personality in this the human form of Sisu in this movie. Gorgeous. And again, going back to what you were saying, the animation, the way it looked, it just it was so good. I don't know if I've seen a Disney movie this well animated over the past couple of years. And I've seen Frozen well, and Moana, but this one yeah, was... Oh. It's the improvements that they've been making. I mean, Moana was a gorgeous movie also, but it's 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 the varying locations within this that really highlighted it for me. Uh, mm -hmm. And then, yeah, like you said, she does look a lot like Aquafina. Like, they modeled the character a little bit more after Aquafina herself, not just in her physical appearance, but just, yeah, her mannerisms, the way she moves and speaks. Obviously, her voice is going to be Aquafina, so... That's uh that that I thought was a, a neat little touch to her character. Um uh, as far as like the overall film as it goes, uh, I found it really interesting because the story the storyline of the movie is that essentially Raya is on a journey with Sisu, the last dragon, to uh, acquire pieces of of essentially an orb that's necessary in order to stop this evil that's happening in her land. Um and the different locations she has to go to are the different, essentially, tribes broken up within the land. Uh, and just how the journey goes and the the other characters that they meet and run into, um, it is just, just the story itself is just fascinatingly weaved together. 
in that the as I as I spoke about the different lands, the different places they go to are essentially almost as cliche as it might say, they they are essentially characters in and of themselves and represented through other characters within the movie as well. Um, I I do love like the relationships between the characters, how they are established Mm -hmm. and kind of how they build throughout the movie. And then just by the time you get to the end of the film, you realize the, the moral of the story, essentially what they were trying to show you and teach you throughout the whole thing is just as beautiful a note to, to get from the movie as the aesthetics of the movie itself, which just leads into just the overall gorgeousness of the entire film as a whole. And uh, it's one that I'm definitely looking forward to revisiting multiple times in the future. Uh, I already like watching Moana over and over again. So this is going to be one of those that's going to be right up there. Um, I will take note though, before we move on to any other points about it, that unlike Moana and Frozen and some of these other like classic Disney movies, this one did not have any musical elements to it. It is very much just a straightforward adventure tale. There wasn't uh, any any elements of like singing songs and and doing those like musical interludes that you get so familiar with in other Disney movies. And I think that might be just the one thing that this movie is kind of missing is that is that magical Disney element of having having songs. It's not necessary for the story, but it's something that I think could have added to it had it been present. I want to hear Sisu rap. I mean, I'm just saying, I know we were all wanting that. You got Aquafina doing the voice. I would have loved to have seen a Sisu rap. That would be, yeah. Uh, So speaking of Aquafina, I do want to highlight uh, some of the other voices in this. First of all, this is one of... One of the things I like about Disney on this is they did get pretty much almost an entire Asian cast for this movie. Yeah. Uh, I know there was there was some controversy in the fact that um, this movie is supposed to be representative of like uh, was it like South is it Southeast Asian? I believe I and so. yeah, Southeast Asian and a lot of the actors that they got were of like just strictly like Eastern Asian or Japanese descent, which I don't know. Like, I, I don't know how, where do you stand on, on talking about a controversy like that in that I, I was just happy. They got like a whole Asian cast. I yeah. thought that was, that was wonderful to begin with. It's more of how do you speak? How do you speak to the actual, the way the people of those cultures yeah. feel, feel about how it was casted. Um, and that's, that's, you know, to whatever degree, you know, if, obviously people want their cultures represented uh, correctly. And so if if that is an issue, then, of course, that's that is going to be something that they're going to speak about. And, you know, you know, everyone else respects. But I, I do I do think looking at it in like the the wider frame of mind, this was at least a right step forward. Yeah, sorry. I'm I'm basically saying like we didn't get exactly what everyone wants, but it is it's a step towards it. Like we have been essentially broken as far as these films go. We just need the like baby steps. Essentially, we'll get there. Yeah. Um, so I do like the other the casting specifically in this. I love Kelly Marie Tran in this. Yes, she she was fantastic. Uh, Kelly Marie Tran has has gotten a lot of flack from like the Star Wars stuff, and unfortunately, so from like s- some of the more toxic parts of that community. I love seeing her get that starring role here, and mm-hmm. I believe you know this does show this does show her star power, and that she does deserve to be in those in these kinds of roles in the the lead central focus role now granted i understand this is animated so it is just a voiceover role but it's not like a live action where i get to act in front of the camera but it is it is fantastic to see her still get those lead roles and i i you know from this i hope that she does get more because she really did a fantastic job as raya yeah the other one i want to point out um was Gemma chan as namari Mm -hmm. um she is definitely someone who we're seeing getting more and more 
like higher profile roles. And I've I, so far I've been liking everything she was in. Um, she was in uh, Crazy Rich Asians as well. She was in Captain Marvel. Uh, she's mm-hmm. going to be in the Eternals and looking forward to that. So like her role in this, I felt like was perfect because her character of Namari in this was very much a lot like her character in Captain Marvel. And I could see like the parallels. I was like, man, that's just good casting right there for yeah. that kind of a person for that kind of a character. I thought they did very well with casting of her. Um, yeah. So like, here's the thing. Uh, we, we both feel pretty good about this movie. I really enjoyed it. I want to see it again and again. There's one thing in here that really kind of, if I'm, if I'm going to stretch to try to find something to, to peg the movie on in any capacity, if I, if I have to find something, it's that some of the dialogue, some of the lingo was a little bit too modern day. And there were moments where that kind of took me out of it a little bit, uh, where they're throwing on phrases like bling and your bestie, like stuff like that. And here's the thing. (laughs) <laughs> that Bling was too modern for you. <laughs> well, think about the time period that this movie should be taking place. Okay. A little bit, yeah. <laughs> um, it's definitely, it's definitely not of that time period for sure. Yeah. Uh, but the thing you have to keep in mind in situations like that is that that kind of dialogue is there for the kids. This is, it's an animated movie. It's a family movie, so there's going to be stuff that is definitely geared for kids watching it and that kind of dialogue is definitely the type of dialogue that's for for kids it's going to be the stuff that they're going to find hilarious they're going to find funny because they're not yet at a place where they're thinking it doesn't make sense for people of that culture to be using terms like bestie and bling no they're going <laughs> that's funny she's talking about bling it's, it's hilarious yeah it's going to be more geared for kids to enjoy uh, so as an adult with an adult mind, that thing took that kind of stuff took me out of it, but it didn't take me so far out of it to ruin the experience. No, by no means. No, the entire movie is fantastic. I really, really, really enjoyed it. Yeah. And uh, the other only other thing I'm going to highlight from this movie is Tuk Tuk is the cutest effing thing I have ever seen. Oh, one. my gosh. I never stay that small. Crap seriously like they're gonna sell millions of these i want to i want to see a knockout drag out celebrity death match tuk tuk <laughs> versus grogu like this is oh, oh just gosh so so adorable just so cute i want one it's just too bad well, they don't well, well, look, can we get a tuk tuk right she's gonna hate it i guarantee you she will hate that thing but anyway uh this one we're talking about uh, 10 stars I'm giving this thing a solid eight and a half to nine, somewhere in that range. I mean, I think I feel pretty solid about giving it a nine, honestly, out of 10 stars. So, yeah, uh, I'm, my rating on it's going to be an eight. So, yeah. Wow, you are a curmudgeon. How dare you give this movie an eight? No. Um, Sorry. <laughs> So, guys, that's going to be our review for Raya and the Last Dragon here on the Cinefanatics channel. This review, we actually did as a clip out. It's part of our larger show, The Tagline, which we do Tuesday nights at 930 Central Time. So come back Tuesday nights, check out our live stream, hang out with us in the chat as we've brought up a couple uh, uh, chat uh, comments in the chat here on, during this review. You can also check us out the various social media links down below right there. And that's a, it's going to be just a ton of fun. Come on back to the channel and and hang out with us again.